Today I want to explain about the FPGA technology, one of the most advanced technology in related to the electronic and semiconductors. Who was the behind of this technology? How did some young engineers who face too many challenges and they make their startup to the giant company with the hundreds billion dollars. So please stay with us that will explain everything about the FPGA application structure and digital circuits in this video. Let's go. FPGA Field Programmable Gate Array. So for many years ago, the engineers want to make the one IC for the circuits design. If you want to make the one circuits in the digital circuits, actually, you have the two way. First of all, you must design it by the TTL IC, the gate IC like as and, or nor not or something like this and this one if you have the uh, if you want to use the this kind of the ICs this one is the very big size uh, about the power consumption is the too high and more complex so what happened if you have the one IC that you can customize it and you can design it and you can uh, program it uh, over time uh, without any problems so the many engineers in uh, thinking about the one ICs that connected hardware to the software with each other that your design can implement it in the one ICs so the story of FPGA is started from here why we must use the FPGA FPGA help you to make the one prototype without too much cost actually. For example, if you want to make the one IC, they take uh, too much time and after that made, uh, you must to pay too much, you need the funder. So because of the one engineer, if you want to take the one circuit and you design it and you want to know about the, this kind of the uh, circuits, actually uh, the easiest way is FPGA. So if you want to make the one prototype before IC designing or you might, if you have the too much data uh, for the analyzing, uh, the FPGA is best choice. As I told you in this slide, uh, the IC fabrication is very costly from processors and the TTL ICs also has many problems uh, like as the complexity, power consumption and some things like this. So the solution of the, this is ASIC technology or application specific integration circuits. And with the, this technology, you can make your customized IC. So many years ago in 1960s, there is the one technology is the PRAM technology. And in 1970s, the Harris company thinking about the, any logic function, how you can customize the logic functions. Actually, all of the digital functions, you can make it with the two gates. One is the OR and other one is the AND. And they make the one network or array between the, these two gates. And of course, you can, uh, they, they thinking the AND set of uh, the AND uh, gates can be fixed. And like as this picture that you can see, the OR was uh, programmable. This is the start of FPGA. And these days, actually, we don't have the memory. It means if you want to make the one program, and the code for the FPGA, you must to burn some switches. Uh, it means this, this link between the AND and OR was uh, in this, for the Harris, uh, as I told you before, the AND uh, was, AND gate was programmable. You must to burn the, some fuses and the wires actually. So this is the big problem for the FPGA. Why? Because if you have the mistake 
and you cannot recover you cannot recover the diffuses and you this ic was use unusable and uh, you must buy the one new one in 1975 there was the one companies signetix and after that um, nowadays we we know this company uh, under name of the nxp one of the most famous company in related to the semiconductors they make the pla or programmable logic array this is the also is the very uh, good advancement in the FPGA. They came and this network between the OR and uh, OR gates and AND gates, both of them was programmable. So uh, the, the, this technology has many problems because that was very slow and of course that was very costly. In 1980, John, uh, John Birkner and H.T. Chua uh, thinking about the one new technology in FPGA programmable array logic and this is the one array between the AND and OR but they make this some uh, macros around the, these logics the digital secret circuits actually have the two uh, structure one is the combinational circuits and second one is the sequential what is the combinational combinational is this combination between the sum and and or gates is its time independent circuits uh, if you put the any inputs immediately you can find it in the outputs but sequential like as the memory or the flip-flop is not like as this the output is related to the input and the past inputs or present inputs. So the John Brickner uh, the, in the 1980 they found if they come and put some sequential circuits around the, this uh, network or array of the AND and uh, AND gate and OR gates is very good and uh, the IOB will be faster but in these days something is happened that was very big in the FPGA industry e e e EPROM that can clean it uh, or erase it by the ultraviolet that was the one magic window on the windows of the these ICs as you can see here and with the ultraviolet you can erase the, all the data so this one is the very good for the FPGA in these days actually in the middle of the 1980 there is the one company under name of the source tree they came and invest near to the seven fifty thousand dollar in the in this in this uh, in this industry and after that these companies make the one big company that know all of you under name of the ultra the ultra make the first fpga in 1984 with the name of uh, ep300 and that was the based on uh, simon's ep round and of course uh, there is the one law here uh, for the semiconductors we say that the more law in the semiconductors we have the one law and we call it more law it said every two years all of the transistor in the one ICs uh, will be doubled based on the uh, demand of the market for the processors so this one is the big problem actually and first uh, FPGA uh, from the ultra that was very really good but still was very uh, costly and uh, about the speed is not too much but that was the one revolution in the FPGA industry and the EP300 actually that was scalable 
It means they came and make some blocks and the wiring between them was programmable and we was the and they put the, some IO parts uh, and make this technology CPLD or complex programmable logic devices and all of the wiring between the these gates uh, actually was programmable in 1980 uh, Ross Freeman uh, the, who were working in the Zylo company with their co-worker make it a one startup that we call it uh, Xilinx. The Xilinx make the one revolution in, uh, in the FPGA industry that I will explain it now. In these days actually uh, the Seiko, the company that manufactured the digital watch, they need the some ability, a specific ability on their watch. For example, they want to this watch speak Japanese, they have the calendar and of course they need the uh, calculator and some things, these specific features actually. They came and uh, write the one contract with the Xilinx. And what happened for that? Uh, the Xilinx uh, accepts these challenges to make the, this kind of actually the FPGA ICs. But that was very, very risky. So the Xilinx uh, employ one young engineer, uh, Bill Carter. The Bill Carter thinking uh, too much about the how can I solve the problem and challenges like as the cost and complexity and other one the speed still was the one of the big challenges because of when you make too much and it means too much delay. Next, they came and do some change in structure of FPGA. Actually, they came and make small blocks. We said configurable logic blocks, as you can see here in the blue, uh, blue one. And the other one, the programmable switch between the each block and they make too much uh, switchable uh, programmable switch that help that you efficient your program and this technology make a scalable the one FPGA it means each part is under your control if you don't want it you cannot uh, and you can active or deactive the one parts so this technology make the FPGA faster and of course about the power consumption was very efficient. This is the uh, uh, this is the first revolution in the FPGA industry. And the Seiko is also uh, be successful in the business because of the the this contract. In these days actually uh, the memory industry is also grew up. What happened? That uh, one company under name of the Actel, they uh, invent the flash-based FPGA families, or they make the ROM that you can write it too much, and that was the anti-fuse technology. Without the burning any fuses you'll be able to write your program. This is the very good for FPGA that you write your program many times. Other techniques about the Xilinx, they came and actually connect the uh, software to the hardware. It means, for example, they came and introduced one techniques uh, under name of EDA or Electronic Design Automation. This ability to the programming and the coding of FPGA uh, make this technology user friendly and of course they give the more control on the hardware and the, uh, they make it easy of use. And of course the some third party companies came and invest to the, uh, this 
kind and branch of FPGA. In these days, actually, in near to the 1919, some uh, some things in the technology was happened that was very uh, good for the FPGA. First of all, is the advance in IC fabrication. This one is the one of the big challenges in FPGA. And after that, the development in the memory uh, industry and memory technology. Many memory with the higher speed and of course with the higher capacity with the very different ability was appear actually. And the investment in this in industry was increased because uh, the, some many of the governments know about the importance and significance of semiconductor uh, technology. So the 1990, as I told you, the Ultra and the Xilinx, they make and the, uh, actually they establish their companies. Now these two companies was uh, is not ordinary companies. They was the giant company and they make their program to the writing the program to, to the write the code inside the, their program. Ultra introduced uh, Quartus 2 for the programming of for the uh, F, for the ultra FPGAs and of course uh, Xilinx ISE is also the program for the Xilinx FPGA. The both of them programmed by the uh, VHDL and the Verilog that is very near to each other. These two languages with each other. If you want to implement one autopilot technology in the one airplane, you must to analyze too much data. So the FPGA help you in the military to the make many simulators and of course some smart uh, weapon actually. And the one of the most uh, popular technology in telecommunication now is FPGA because the uh, data is the too much is huge and for the analyzing converting the noising uh, modulating coding you need the to you need the some very strong processors and the FPGA is the first choice now you can see that how the startups came and uh, converted to the giant company and how the FPG was born and how the, these young engineers uh, overcome to the, these challenges. Thank you so much that you see this video until the end. If you like this video, please press the like button from the end. Thank you so much.